The Catholic Church and specifically the Vatican has released a report on gender during Pride Month. And as you can imagine, the report is rejecting the notion of non-binary gender. In its paper, the Vatican rejects that gender is non-binary, at one point calling the idea fictitious and repeats antiquated beliefs that gender is either one thing or the other and nothing in between. The paper even goes on to say that sexual orientation is a choice. So. Look, the timing of this is obviously not great because it is Pride Month, but it does remind you of why Pride Month exists. It reminds you that, hey, this is not just about celebrating the advancements and the progress that the community has made, but it's about continuing to fight for equality. But with that said, I mean, I just think there's a lack of education when it comes to this, because I think people mix up sex and gender and the reality is those are two different things, right? And even scientists have come forward and said, look, sex is sex, but gender is on a continuum, right? So it is very, it is very possible for someone to identify as non-binary, but the, the Catholic Church doesn't seem that interested in, in putting that out there. So in the paper, they talk about gender being binary. And they also say that sexual orientation is a choice, as Anna told you. No, but wait, hold on, let's think that through. If sexual orientation is a choice, well, then some people make that choice and other people don't make that choice. So then, then you've obviously got a spectrum, right? Because somewhere along the line, some people decide that they're gonna go in that direction or they're not, according to their own theory, mm-hmm. right? And so that doesn't make any sense if you're saying all of it is binary. And and if now you got to make up your mind, right? Is it a spectrum or are you just randomly choosing it, right? And why would anyone randomly choose to be the target of discrimination by almost all the major religions in the world? And so none of that makes any sense at all. And and one of the things they're emphasizing here is education. And so they don't mean education as in science, math, reading. No, they they mean it in terms of propaganda. So we must tell people Mm -hmm. that they need to be straight. But if they're either born straight or not born straight, why would education make a difference? So if I'm born straight, it's if you tell me being gay is great, it wouldn't make any difference at all, right? Right. So obviously they think it's a spectrum and they think that, hey, if we don't keep telling people, don't be gay, don't be doing gay, don't be gay, they're gonna be gay, <laughs> right? So obviously they don't even believe what they're saying. Yeah, and look, we've been there, we've done that, right? I mean, there's been this push for who knows how long to pressure people to deny their own sexual orientation in order to conform to what religious groups want, and it doesn't work. And one other thing that they mentioned in this report was that, and this is according to the Daily Beast, I'm sorry, Quartz, my apologies. The paper also conflates gender queerness and non monogamous relationships, saying, for instance, that the duality in male female couples is furthermore seen as in conflicting with the idea of polyamory. Okay, so look, you can definitely identify strictly as a woman or strictly as a man and be engaged in non monogamous relationships. In fact, it happens every day, whether couples (laughs) want to admit it to one another or not. But either way, look, Science is science, okay? The science is based on on research, it's based on on data, like it's something that you can turn to for actual evidence. So what evidence does the Vatican have, right? Like what are they relying on for this report? Did they interview Jesus? Well, luckily we did. And um, Jesus had some strong thoughts on the very people who published this report. Let's take a look. Yeah, I created them, but them is like a gender non-specific pronoun. So like, I created them, use it. Listen, my dad gave 10 laws to everyone and they were like, don't kill people, don't kill people's wives or something. None of them were like, don't be fabulous. One also, Jonathan Van Ness just came out as gender non-binary and we're basically the same person. So I'm cool with it. <laughs> but you know, uh, so people, uh, these same folks will probably find that quite sacrilegious. But um, you should read the Sermon on the Mount and you should actually read your own Bible. So Jesus didn't say anything about gay people. He talked about helping the poor, the needy, he helped 
the people that the rest of society made fun of like prostitutes and belittled and shamed. So all the things that are against homosexuality are in the Old Testament. And the Old Testament also says you shouldn't eat shrimp, you shouldn't eat crabs, you shouldn't eat lobster. And it's just as much of an abomination. They just don't care about that logical fallacy. And so, you know, where Anna says it's not science, and they say, well, it's in the Bible. It's also not in the Bible that you shouldn't eat lobster. It's just a stone cold fact. Mm -hmm. So, also stone cold crabs. You shouldn't eat any of that stuff. <laughs> but they go, I don't care. I think lobster is delicious. And I want to hate someone. So, I'm going to pick that one part of the Old Testament and I'm going to make them the other and make them the source of my ridicule and shame. Yeah, and there's also, there's also this you know this hypocritical notion that uh, you, you know parts of the paper talking about how you still respect people, but this is inherently not respecting who someone intrinsically is. Yes, and that creates the uh, the atmosphere and a culture where that violence persists, right? So if we talk about, for example, um, trans people, you know, uh, for for folks that say, uh, you know, I haven't, you know. Do whatever you want, but in my mind, it's this or that, right? That's that's the basis for much of the violence that exists, right? Where you know uh, a lot of cisgender people, um, you know, committing violence against trans people because you know it fits in with all these other rigid ideas, right? That like you know that that for example, it, it's very common where these cisgender heterosexual men will be with a trans woman and then find out that she is trans mm -hmm. and then be violent against her because. We believe in this binary, right? And and if and if I identify as a heterosexual man, and you're challenging that notion of myself to some to some degree, or so we think, right? Because we're not, because the person is actually a woman, even if she's a trans woman. Um, then it sort of it creates this like mental, you know, this mental break, which is, you know, it causes us to enact this patriarchal violence. So I think in that way, it's like we, we can't have it both ways, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we really can't have it both ways. And why does the person act out in that way? And sometimes it happens after the sex. Mm -hmm. And it's because they've been taught, programmed, educated to hate themselves. Mm -hmm. So they actually enjoyed the act. There was a reason they were there in the mm -hmm. first place. But they were told you should not enjoy that, you should not be yourself. Mm -hmm. And so if you are, you should hate yourself. And and then they take it out on not themselves, but the person that they had that relationship with. So I, I want to say one more thing about what's in the paper. They criticized, quote, a strong emphasis on the freedom of the individual. They said you should not have that emphasis. Now, for all the right wingers who say, "Well, no, you guys are wrong," and they, and you know, it's the Bible says you shouldn't be gay and you should not lie with a man and you have to listen to the Bible, etc. It's and that's why we, sh uh, all these different laws that they argue in, on behalf of gay. Uh, People shouldn't be allowed to marry like straight people. Uh, women shouldn't be allowed to have abortions because you have to listen to my Bible. Where your Bible criticizes a strong emphasis on the freedom of the individual. And I was led to believe that the Republican Party was all about the freedom of the individual. So make up your mind. On the go, don't worry, we got you covered. You can still listen to TYT at our new podcast network. Find us on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, or at tyt.com slash podcast.